Hi, I'm Katie Couric. Welcome to Eye to Eye. Wednesday marked the end of a long nightmare for the families of the three former Duke lacrosse players falsely accused of rape. Harry Smith spoke with the parents of Colin Finnerty about their confidence in their son's innocence and the impact of the ordeal on their family. When those three boys took the microphone at that press conference and expressed themselves so eloquently in your son at the press conference talking about, I can't think of anything in my life that could have brought me closer. These kinds of things tear people apart. He says he brought my family closer together. He's right, though. I mean, we had a wonderful family before, but I can't say this year has brought us closer together. Uh, to see the siblings stand by him the way they did. His older brothers were there for him every weekend. Um, his younger sisters were just an incredible amount of support. And as a parent, as parents, to see that, that's like all your dreams come true. I mean, that's what family is about. And I'm so proud of how they got through this year. It's you know, I'm sure you've heard uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. This almost killed us, but I think um, it made us stronger. Talk about that a little bit. What is, is there a way to describe what this last year has been like? Well, it's been a blur. I mean, it's, uh, again, it's almost a year to the day. Um, and when we found out Colin was indicted, we went into a tailspin. We didn't know what it meant, what to do. We didn't know why it was. Uh, and from that point on, um, it was a blur, whether it was the challenge of assembling a legal defense team for your son, knowing that if you didn't get it right, uh, the consequences were outsized and disproportionate. Um, huge amount of pressure um, emotionally. Uh, it was just, you know, I think someone today pointed towards uh, comparing it towards someone with a terminal Ill illness or, and we've thought about those things and but in the end I think uh, with justice prevailing and people told us it would um, we just uh, it was hard to have a high level of confidence that that would in fact be the case but here we are and it happened. You had confidence in his innocence yet at the same time for the last year the specter hung over your family that he could go to prison for as long as 30 years. What was that like to live with every day? Incredibly frightening. Um, obviously a lot of sleepless nights. Um, you know, many times I'd say to the lawyers, I feel like there's a madman chasing my son down the street and there's nothing I can do to stop it. Uh, it's your child and it was incredibly frightening not to be able to take control of the situation and, and fix it. You know, I, I said to him at one point, you know, if you, when you were a little boy and you fell, I could pick you up and give you a hug and give you a kiss and I could make it better. And I didn't have a good answer here. I mean, we were trying our hardest, but sometimes things were just out of our control. And that's frightening when it's your child. What is your feeling toward the district attorney, toward Nifon? Obviously, there's so much emotion there. I mean, he's a parent, he has a child, so I had a really hard time trying to grasp how he was willing to use these boys for his own gain when he does have children and he knows, you know, what it is like to be a parent. That was so hard for me to understand at night, um, how he could live with himself knowing that these boys were innocent, yet they were going to serve a purpose for him. I couldn't understand that. Are you angry? I am. You know, I, I see what he has put our family through, let alone the other families, um, let alone everybody else who's connected to these families, and many, many more. Um, I feel like we're religious people. Um, and yet, in this case, I have little room in my heart for forgiveness um, for the DA. Uh, I have much more sympathy uh, for the accuser. I think um, she comes from a maybe a mixed up uh, background, maybe a challenged background. Um, I don't know. Um, 
but I do have sympathy for her. But I really view the DA as, as the man who could have stopped this, um, never had to get out of the chute. Um, he's the one who made it happen. He's the one who had an agenda. And um, may, maybe over the years, my feelings will change and I will develop some forgiveness, uh, but at the moment, um, it's very hard to do.